Thursday's market update. We are at an amazing place, newly opened. It's the yard, and I'm here with Wade. He's gonna give us a grand tour. Hey, come on in, guys. It'll be fun to show you everything. So two small cages here. We can do front toss machine work here, which is great, just because of the fact of the matter is we get a lot of mom and dads that come in that they, they can't you know throw front toss. They can't do those things. So one of the things that we've decided in our business model is we service people when they come in. We have talent, you know, or us will come in, throw front toss to kids. We work them just Got like a it. trainer would, which is kind of a hybrid model instead of having just straight custom training, which we'll have lots of people that we have coming in from the Twin Cities or around the area are actually gonna do that. Um, but we wanna just be able to say our employees are here to service. When you come in the door, we're actually servicing you, mm -hmm. right? Because mom and dad like that, they can drop off. We've had some that drop off, go over to a little thistle, go have a few, and then come back in an hour, the kid gets their work in. So these two small cages work really, really well. The other thing that we did is a little bit unique, and I'll talk a little bit about back behind there, uh, synthetic ice. This is fully skatable. Kids can skate on it, shoot, one-on-one uh, -on -one practices with a goalie, whatever it is. Really a nice concept to have. We found that there's a big need for kids that play baseball and hockey. Um, we've learned now that there's even a bigger need for kids that play baseball and play basketball. Hmm. So if we, if we ever do expansion, we're going to build half-court basketball things. There's a real shortage. I didn't realize that the schools are completely full. Huh. The you know the the rack is completely full all the time. I mean, there's a real need for this. So so we kind of realized that's one of the things. And would you say a lot of the kids are two sport kids? In a Rochester? lot of two sport kids, whether whether they play basketball, hockey, or baseball or lacrosse is another one. So don't mind the hole in the wall. We're getting that fixed. We're actually putting up rubber mats all the way through tomorrow. Uh, running through, we had somebody chuck it right through the sheetrock, which was kind of interesting. This was all cinder block. Um, you know, which we liked that look, but um, for some reason, the, the city and the ordinance wanted us to put coat of sheetrock. I'm not a big fan of it because we could do we could do a lot more with the center block, but you know, the city's the city, and they can do what they want. And, yep. You know, it is what it is. So it worked out. We put that up. Um, we're not completely done with this area. This is all going to be revamped. We're actually going to put in the Peloton systems. What's that? So uh, you, have you seen like Peloton bicycles or Peloton treadmills? It's, uh, Peloton has online classes. It's really amazing infrastructure. So you can come in, do a Peloton class while you're working out on your thing, or treadmill with other people live, and you, you, you compete against one huh. another, do all that. So we're gonna add that function here. Really, it's not about us being a, you know, competing with the rack or doing the others. Really what our focus is, we have a lot of parents who come in, drop their kids off, they just wanna exercise. Or we have kids that wanna do that, you know. So what we've realized is there's kind of that need if they're sitting around, yep. they wanna do something because they really can't help, then it's perfect timing for them to just kind of come. Um, and our location's great because they can run to Costco, they can run to wherever they wanna do right within the location of town. So um, this I'll open up for you guys. Go ahead and just come through here. So the other cool part is this is three long cages. These can be converted. We take these conversions and we turn this into basically six cages. So we're really busy and we want to break it down. We put half things in here oh, that'll run all the way across. These also come all the way through. Okay. So I can slide all this back and open the whole area up, which makes it convertible. So I can take this and move it back. So I can have situations where I want to open it up, have a bunch of pitching lanes, doing all kinds of different things like that. Um, what's really neat about it, uh, we're a really inclusive facility. Most that I've seen of facilities have been more baseball centric. We're actually softball and baseball, hockey. You could use it for lacrosse. Um, we've had some soccer teams come in and do some stuff too, which, which really isn't made necessarily for that, but from a small range area, they can do some training. We'll do some acceleration stuff. We're working with um, Active PT. Okay. Um, Active PT has guaranteed that they will see any of our clients within 24 hours if they have an injury or anything of that nature. Um, Brian McQuilkin, who's one of the co-owners over there, know him well. Um, we're going to do a pitching clinic on health and rehab from that. Hmm. So we're starting to do a lot of interesting things to really help because I think the one thing is parents don't know what they don't know. And what I mean is they don't know arm care. Right? And the only option right now is basically the Mayo Clinic downtown. We've got some other options with that. I myself have coached for 28 years. I'm certified in the National Pitching Association. We've got guys coming in from the cities. Uh, we've got some great connections even with Major League Baseball. Uh, in fact, the Minnesota Twins are going to be here on February 23rd. Um, we're going to do a big event that they're going to talk about how to coach young players. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're doing some stuff really. I mean, the reality is I'm a business owner that's been fortunate enough to do some other ventures. My other partners the same way. This is really one of those things that I don't think people realize. We've put a lot of money in, and the real goal 
was not to necessarily make money. We don't necessarily want to bleed to death through that, but we really want to have the option to really provide this as a community-based thing. And that's why our, our, our membership model is really, really affordable by comparison. I did the comparisons to the Twin Cities and other stuff and, and just realized that, you know, basically what we have to do, you know, meeting codes and standards, uh, we have to charge a certain price, but but that hmm. price is really, really reasonable. And what's the membership cost? So generally? membership cost um, for an individual about $85 a month. Um, that's unlimited use. Um, if they do a six month, I think it's about 95. And then there's a family plan for like $125. It's really, really relatively cheap. I mean, when you look at what you get and your family multiple use, we've got a lot of people that are really excited because it really for them, it replaces a lot of time that they've had. Especially thinking, I've got synthetic ice, I can go shoot for whatever and then I can go take, you know, ground balls, hits, do whatever I need to do. We'll have classes in the summer. There's some additional fees if people want to do some custom training. We've got uh, individual trainers in town that are local, some from out of town, and some baseball organizations that want to come in and utilize it. Right. So there'll be some additional costs, but but all in all, at that price point, that's really, really reasonable. I mean, I can tell you, my kids went through some programs in the cities. I paid probably six to 10 times that amount. You know, so that that's and really that's not even. I mean, well, I'm sure it is, but counting in your transportation and counting in everything. We're right? trying to get rid of that. That yeah. was the one thing that I I, I struggle with living in Rochester. I've done a lot of business in the Twin Cities, and one of the biggest challenges I've seen is there's some things that we want to offer here that sometimes people are driving to the cities to do, and I'm like, I'm removing two and a half to three hours of your time driving up. If you want to drive up to Wyzetta, drive up to Wyzetta or Minnetonka. But guess what? We have a top-notch facility that was built and designed just like the ones that are up in the cities, you can do the same thing here without ever having to, yeah. to be, which I think is really, really important. Um, the machinery, we have spent an immense amount of money on the machinery. If you look at our system, we can take a look back at this. There's nothing in market here around here, uh, especially designed softballs. I can hit with a special one touch of a button. I can say, go ahead and turn this on. And if I want to say, listen, I want to do nothing but drop curves I can hit the button and, and, and the speed and let it go and every eight seconds that's gonna run <laughs> that's which great. is really astonishing when you think about being able to do that so here's the nice part I don't have to have two people I if I want to come in and do work I can hit that we've got a remote with it you oh, hit the nice. button the hitter can just hit on their own and do that that makes a huge difference compared to what you you have to have somebody sitting here doing that right, right. Uh, very consistent uh, is, is astonishingly and amazing uh, what these are. Really expensive systems. This is what the University of Minnesota has. Hmm. Um, some of the major league teams themselves have the same same systems. So we're really taking a lot of the, the cutting edge stuff around to be, to be able to do this. Can you do uh, one? Can you just see what oh, it looks sure. like? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Let me turn it on and run one here. Fuck, you should go ahead. Yeah, you want to go ahead? <laughs> you want to go ahead? <laughs> Actually, I'll hit over there for you. <laughs> Let's have someone hit <laughs> You'll, you'll have me hit some, some record recently. some. Yeah. So That'd I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead. And I'm just going to do a, a regular single pitch sequence. So it's one and one. It's going to just shoot the softball right through. <laughs> it doesn't miss. It's very, <laughs> very <laughs> accurate. This is in range. It'll just keep going. So, so if I want, I just hit automatic. Every eight seconds, it'll send a new one. So which is really amazing. So there you go. Wow. Next one goes, rotates through. You can have somebody being alone or having. And the nice part is then I can go coach them while I'm doing it, not having to sit here. Well, the other so, thing I noticed too is the camera above the one right there. I'll so you have the ability to play back. I'm sure. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause and shut this off. Um, that's the Rap Soto system. Um, I almost should have you guys here when I utilize this. The Rap Soto system actually is uh, a system we have, and I'll send you guys some links for some of that. Uh, it actually monitors the spin rate of the ball, the location and movement of the ball. So here's a great example and why we have implemented science in this whole thing. What we've learned, Major League Baseball, college baseball, all these programs now are realizing the training mechanisms have changed today. What we taught 20 years ago is completely obsolete, right? So we'll talk about things like launch angle, okay, which is your launch angle attack on the ball. We'll talk about exit velocity. We'll talk about spin rate. So it doesn't matter how hard you throw. We want to know what your spin rate is because that could equal how your ball moves, right? So we actually, the, that Rapsodo will have an iPad sitting there and we can see your movement of your ball, how much it moves. The naked eye can't see that. No. Hmm. The naked eye cannot see that. So when you start to think about a two seam fastball, right? And that spin rate's 1500. And I tell you, hey, let's widen your grip. And that grip suddenly makes your spin rate 1200. Your ball's gonna actually drop a little bit more. 
right? The naked eye can't see it. Hmm. But now the human eye, when you, when you think about it when you're hitting, that will foul up a hitter. So we're able to do things we've never been able to do now. Hmm. Actually see a kid's curve and see his spin rate would be maybe 11 o'clock to, to 5 o'clock versus truly 12 and 6. I mean, all the things that we would talk about. But the cool part is with it is kids get instant information, though, right? So what we're finding is the habits are changing. So I had a young man come in, and we'll talk about hitting and hit tracks. He had an exit velocity of about 72. That means that's about 72 miles an hour is the, is the ball coming off the bat. Through about seven, eight sessions, we started to see increase more and more. Within the last two weeks, we've seen him peak at 86 miles an hour. He's increased 14 miles an hour. Here's the difference. That's further distance on the ball. That's the difference between hitting maybe 250 to hitting 350, right? So suddenly we've been able to actually do that. He's been able to see the affirmation. So the funny thing is when I'm talking to him and saying, hey, we need to get your backside through, through the zone faster. Here's why, da, da, da. A lot of that went right over a kid's head. But now I'm able to say, hey, if you get this backside through, you're gonna increase your, your exit velocity. So suddenly that, that young man was like, that meant a lot to me. He's trying to beat some set of number in the gamification, which is huge hmm. in what we're doing in development. In fact, I'll show you guys how to use that. I'll hit a couple on it, just to give you guys an yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Which we cool. need, so. <laughs> 10 cameras built in let you actually track things like exit velocity, launch angle, anything within a 10 foot rate range, it captures, okay? The really cool part with this, and this is where it gets really technical, is if we start to see a kid that has certain things, maybe his launch angle's negative all the time, we can hook up the camera, and we can actually video in real time and synchronize and break down his swing based upon that, which is huge, huge, huge. In fact, hey, Michael. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna have you swing. I'm gonna front toss to you. All right. You got you. You wanna come over and hit a few? He'll be good. Yeah. It'll be good to see him. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right, you're good, yep. Good swing. We'll let it land. 273, warning track power. It's just, and the, and the nice part is now it's an affirmation for him to see the results. So if you look back up, here's a great example. Summary, yeah, look yeah. back up, look at where his hit chart is. I know exactly where every ball was hit. Yeah. So suddenly I look and say, look at where all your, your doubles, triples, all the things that are blue were hard hit, you know, base hits. Look where they tended to be, right? So he had everything on the button for sure. The other thing is you start to look at stats like, okay, he hit 442 in this session. His hard hit average was 372. I like hard if it landed where trajectory where it would have landed. Mm. But now I'm saying, listen, so I have a problem. If I see a guy has a 442 average, but his hard hit average is 250, then I have to ask the question, are you really hitting the ball on the button all the time? So the closer that number is, the better. That's a really good ratio right there. Then I look at his average uh, velocity at 75. His max was 83. That is really close. I've had some kids have like an exit velocity of 72, but their average velocity is like 50 or 48. I'm going, that, that's an anomaly. That means they hit one really on the button hard. The rest of them, they didn't. So I like to see this. And my suspicion is, as you've been doing this, this just keeps improving. It just keeps narrowing, hmm. which is what we want to do. Do you take the report and look at it afterwards? Like actually study it or oh, you know yeah. we have, I try to see like if I'm going up because my high before I started was like 80 yeah, maybe not even now it's up to 87 and then so the app that we'll roll out to the kids they can actually see oh, that data sweet. which is really nice so then we'll start having leaks so think about it you know we, we have it's, it's a nice gamification I've had five or six guys here from some different schools he's Mayo I had I think I had Mayo JM Lourdes I think I had one century yeah. guy they're all together here competing and they were they were doing a game which yeah. was really, really cool to see that they're all, they're all kind of competing. Some of them don't know each other. Some of you guys are just getting to know each other. So we think that's, that's really the great, great part. It's the future. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it really is. Don't have to wait for spring to come. Yeah, I've, I've been looking for a place like this for a long time. And then yeah. Ian, the dude from JM, 
came yeah. up and told me about it. Okay. So I've been here ever since. We're seeing more and more high school kids coming in. They get they get so much work in a, in a matter of short period of time. They're able to do all this and, and, and really work with each other. So we're seeing both baseball and softball. We get a ton of softball girls coming in. So we're, we're excited. This is a great time. Neat. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, Mike. I'll clean it up. I was planning on hitting it. Yeah. Oh, we were? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll help you. like you're swinging. Do you feel how it kind of pulls you through? It wants you to get that back side through, okay? So go ahead, yep, yes. You don't notice it, it gets your back side through fast. See that? Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? 